In this video, I'm going to explain how to test and fix buffer bloat in PFSense. To better understand the issue though, let's start with an analogy. Increasing the number of lanes on a highway, like adding more bandwidth to your internet, might seem like a solution to traffic congestion. However, it doesn't address the root cause of the problem. Imagine a busy intersection with well-functioning traffic lights. Cars move through efficiently because the lights provide a clear order. Now imagine that same intersection with malfunctioning lights. Even though the road itself can handle the same amount of traffic, the lack of organization leads to chaos and then gridlock. Now, buffer bloat is really just that. It is a gridlock because all the packets on your network can get to the router very fast, but if they're not managed once they get there to match the speed and match the bandwidth you have, well, you can have buffer bloat where things are just kind of chaotically hitting the queues and not being queued really in a proper order. And that's what we're going to solve today is how to set up the limiters inside of PFSense to solve your buffer bolt problem. But we'll touch on traffic shaping as well. So let's get started. Now, before we get into how to set up and fix the buffer bloat problem, I want to talk about the bigger picture of how this works and what about the other functionality, including the wizard that's in PFSense. And if you want to dive deep into the science behind how these cues work and some of the challenges that can come with them, there's a video that Mark, I believe his last name is Ferno, has done. You'll find that link in the description below. This video is about 40 minutes of explaining the science behind different types of traffic cues, traffic shaping, prioritization, and a really good deep understanding of how it all works. If you want to go deeper, that video, as I said, is in the description below. The version of PF Sense he references later in the video is going to be a little dated, but the information as far as how the cues work is still quite relevant in terms of understanding the functional parts of it. And there is a wizard within PF Sense if you want to go and do the fine tuning of very specific types of traffic and set the prioritization based on the way it identifies the traffic. This is something that is not as needed here in 2024 on most networks that have high bandwidth. This was something that was much more popular when we had a very finite, sometimes our ISDN lines in those earlier days were only so many kilobytes. And now we measure hundreds of megabytes of data. So it doesn't matter as much because it's not that we're out of bandwidth. It's that the packets are not queued properly and routed efficiently. So the way you solve that is you could do this or the simpler way that we're going to take today is just setting up limiters and setting these limiters up to do the queuing in a more organized fashion. And we're going to solve this with the write-up that we have right here in the NetGate documentation, configuring how limiters for buffer bloat. They've got it well documented, and they also give you a link to a buffer bloat test site. And that's actually where I want to start, just talk about what is the status before I add these limiters. And you can see my buffer bloat grade of C. That's not ideal, especially when you think about 123 milliseconds can be bad for gaming or any type of latency sensitive application such as voice. So we have a download of 600 and an upload of 80. So we know what my bandwidth is and we're not gonna really be changing much on the bandwidth. We're actually gonna set the bandwidth to a little bit under because I find that's where I get the best level of performance by going just a little under what is prescribed. And it's not about having the maximum bandwidth as I noted earlier, it is about having a properly managed queue so your bandwidth gets used efficiently. Now there's several steps to this and they're really simple to follow. So I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'm just gonna give you the idea of how to do in PF Sense, and I'll show you the finished setup here. Now we go to firewall, traffic shaper, then limiters and we wanna build a new limiter. We're going to go ahead and call this one WAN down, just like it does in instructions. I'm setting this to 550, just a little bit below what I have in terms of bandwidth. This gives me a little bit of overhead in case there's some problems uh, with my upstream provider, and I want to make sure I still have the packets in order. We'll leave this at tail drop. We're going to change this to FQ coddle. Q length, we're going to specify 1000, just like it does in the instructions here. And we'll scroll down to the bottom and hit save. Now, after you've done that, we want to go back here and check the ECM box, just like the instruction says, hit save. Now, once we've done this, we don't need to apply the changes because we have a few more to build. We scroll down to the bottom once again, and we want to add a new queue. And this one's much simpler. We're just going to enable this queue. We're going to call it WAN down queue. Scroll down here, leave everything at default, leave it at tail drop and go ahead and hit save. And then you repeat the process, creating the WAN up and the WAN up queue. And you can see 
for the WAN up, I've got this set to 75. Once again, just a little bit less than the maximum 80 that I have for my provider upload to give myself a little bit of headroom there. And everything else here is just left at the fault. Make sure, as I noted, that this ECN explicit congestion notification is checked on both of these. And now we've completed the limiters, but we have not applied them yet. The next step from there is to go over to create a floating rule. And we're going to follow the instructions again for setting up this rule. Action pass, quick, make sure you check that. Interface is going to be WAN. Direction out, there's an important reason you want it out. It is not any, it is only specifically for out because you're applying it to the WAN and that's how this will match. Source match is WAN address, destination any. You can log packets if you want. I give you the description of CODA limiters. We're not worried about any of this until we get down here. And this is really important. We've got the WAN DHCP gateway. This is the one I want to apply this to. But yes, you can apply it to other gateways and other interfaces for other reasons. But for simplicity, we're just applying it to WAN. The in is going to be your WAN up queue. And the down is a WAN down queue. Not WAN down, but specifically WAN down queue. If you follow the instructions, they should all be named the same. Then you can simply save and apply these rules. And here's how the results look different after building these queues. Buffer bloat, A+. Plus. This is ideal, this is what you want. And you can see that I've only got four millisecond difference when it's doing a download. That little bit of overhead means, yes, I'm not getting 600, I'm getting 553. I could probably tweak it a little bit higher and it would probably work. And as I said, as long as there's plenty of overhead and there's nothing restricted coming from my upstream provider. And yes, I lost a little bit on the upload. But if you're someone dealing with high latency issues or latency sensitive applications, especially in the gaming world, this is a huge improvement over the way it was. Latency will drive you crazy, as anyone knows, and the lag from it is just, well, the difference between winning and losing many matches, as any gamer who's probably watching this video is extremely aware of. So that's all you have to do in PFSense to get this set up. Now, one quick troubleshooting tip. Existing states on the firewall will remain where they are even after you create this floating rule. Only new states will be going through the floating rule, which means if you had that browser open and you had just done the buffer bloat test and you apply the rule and rerun that page and do it again, it may not go through the floating rule because you have an existing established connection. But if you close your browser, restart your computer, etc., the states will fall off and start new ones, and then we will know it's going through the floating rule. You can also mouse over on any rule inside of PFSense, and it'll tell you the states that are going through that so you know that they're being applied properly. But it's one of those little troubleshooting things that you can think, well, maybe it's not working properly. But remember, sessions don't get broken when you reload firewall rules, but you actually can force and clear the states. There's an option for that. But watch my troubleshooting video to talk a little bit more in depth about that. Just a little thing that you kind of need to watch out for. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel. All the links of things I talked about, as I noted, are down below, including that other video uh, that dives deeper into how the traffic shaping works in general or queuing and all the related things. That video that Mark did is a little older video, but boy, that's really good. Head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics. Head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials are available whenever you're watching this video. And you can also stop and subscribe to my newsletter to keep up with things that are going on. All right, and thanks.